But the preliminary damp evidence is extremely encouraging, and, and we're going to hopefully have those results sometime soon. Okay, we're here at Low Carb USA, San Diego, and uh, I've just listened to an excellent talk from Angela Poff, who is uh, one of Dominic D'Agostino's PhDs working on aspects of his research. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'd be great actually just to have a quick chat around some of the evidence base around ketogenic diets as being helpful in managing cancer and or as an adjunct therapy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so. I'm, I've worked for many years on uh, the ketogenic diet and other ways to induce ketosis, um, such as exogenous ketones, uh, as a potential cancer therapy. And it's really interesting, in the cancer world, we think of treatments as being very singular, targeting mm. a, speci a specific gene pathway um, or protein product, um, and the ketogenic diet uh, from the preclinical evidence that's available really is working in a dramatically different way. You have massive alteration of the metabolic profile and metabolism is dramatically altered in cancer. And so cancer has um, a phenotype where it consumes a large amount of glucose nice. and makes lactate from it. So there's a decrease in cancer's um, use of mitochondria to generate mm. their ATP. And they, and they do this for various reasons, and it bestows a lot of benefit onto the tumor cell. So when you, when you see that glucose is, is such an important energy substrate for cancer, mm. and then insulin is as well, so insulin is a potent growth factor for nice. cancer, it becomes pretty obvious that an attempt to target cancer would be something that lowers glucose and insulin and the ketogenic diet does that and um, the diet's been used clinically for a hundred years to treat refractory epilepsy so we actually have a lot of good safety data on long-term use of the ketogenic diet which also makes it a nice you know something to study for cancer and so ketosis aside from the obvious limiting of glucose and limiting of insulin mm. that ketosis would induce there's many other effects and it appears that ketones themselves are directly damaging to cancer cells. And this right. has been shown in a variety of cancer cell types, mm. um, from brain cancer to breast cancer to melanoma to many other types of cancer. Ketones will, in a dose-dependent fashion, reduce cell division, so reduce the ability of the cancer to cell to make copies of itself. Right. and also reduce viability, so it will kill cancer cells. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of ideas why that might be the case. So ketones will inhibit glycolysis, which mm. is a really important energy pathway for cancer. Ketones also are very anti-inflammatory, and ketosis right. in general is very anti-inflammatory. And inflammation plays a huge role in cancer development and progression. I was going to say, one of your slides, and I took photos of many of them, they were <laughs> fascinating, but uh, one of them showed even at, I think, 25 uh, millimole glucose, so with yeah. lots of glucose present for the cancer cells, yeah. still increasing ketones at a much lower level, mediated growth. Yeah, absolutely. So even in this abundance of glucose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what we saw. Um, even when we gave so much glu glucose to the cancer cell that they could want yeah. and this is what the standard culturing conditions for cancer cells are very high levels of glucose because they need it um, a, supplying what's five millimolar beta hydroxybutyrate yeah. which is like a physiological range it's high yeah. but it's still physiological yeah. yeah we had a reduction in proliferation which is cell division and a reduction in viability mm. and that response was enhanced when we also lowered glucose so yeah. if we created a scenario where glucose was lower and ketones were higher yeah. which is obviously what the ketogenic diet induces and yeah. we saw a nicer response in terms of the effects on the cancer cells. Right.
Excellent. Yeah. And, and insulin, yeah, I, I have particular, people probably watching would be aware of particular interest in insulin because myself and Dr. Gerber gave a talk on cardiovascular disease and mm. it's quite stunning how important insulin is and glucose metabolism in cardiovascular disease. Yes. And of course type 2 diabetes drives untold amounts of it. Yeah. But insulin blows away cholesterol as an important mm -hmm. uh, kind of component of cardiovascular mm. disease. But now in cancer as well, another massive chronic mm. modern disease, we have insulin and IGF-1 again being mm -hmm. a really important factor. So maybe we can talk a bit I more about that. Tied. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I think it is also a component of the high glycemic diet that many people yeah. eat. Hyperglycemia, high blood glucose, hyperinsulinemia, high insulin that comes with a high glycemic diet um, is very inflammatory. It creates in a metabolic environment that is very conducive to tumor formation and cancer progression. And I think it, it's interesting that we keep seeing these metabolic links between major chronic diseases. Mm. Um, you see mitochondrial dysfunction in metabolic disorders like diabetes and obesity yeah. and various metabolic syndromes, but also in neurological diseases like Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis and cancer and all of these chronic diseases and many of which are being researched right now as um, the ketogenic diet is being researched as therapy yeah. for. I think it's targeting that underlying metabolic pathology that and I think hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia or insulin plays a really big role in causing that damage. So we're seeing that this, you know, the diet seems to be effective in many different disorders because they share common threads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and very good. And then in terms of, you mentioned safety, and I know it has yeah. been raised question marks around safety. Now, yeah. earlier I was talking with Dominic and I think others, and there's no actual evidence <laughs> of harm, but it keeps getting raised. Yeah, yeah. Um, the diet in and of itself, you know, it's been used for a very long time uh, in a lot of healthy people implement it obviously oh, yeah. daily and have uh, you know when you compare head-to-head -head studies um, of, of ketogenic diets versus maybe something that you would classically be told to go on a low-fat um, high-carb diet yeah mm. you see just uh, Jeff Volek's work obviously has shown this oh, many yeah. times marked improvements in your cardiovascular health and overall health markers. Mm. So the diet in and of itself, you know, I think has a very nice safety profile. Mm. Um, I, I completely understand the, um, for moving in into a new disease state, you know, we need to yeah. be careful and do the proper studies and that's what's being done right now and, and the, for cancer, for example. Right, and so, yes. Um, cancer, it, while is very related to these things, is another beast, and we need to um, be diligent at mm. at doing quality, you know, human-controlled studies. But the preliminary evidence is extremely encouraging, and and we're gonna hopefully have those results sometime soon. So, mm. you know, I. I'm not to the point where, you know, I wouldn't, I, I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't tell anyone what to do anyway, but, um, you know, we don't, we don't know, we don't fully understand the place that the ketogenic diet has in cancer research yet. We are seeking to answer that question, and hopefully within the next decade we'll have a really solid answer, because there's a lot of trials going on right now. Um, which is exciting. <laughs> it is a very, I mean, I certainly got that from both Dominic's and your presentations. It really is an exciting time. Yeah. Perhaps it doesn't attract so much funding compared to <laughs> yeah, genetic or... That's very true, yeah. yeah. But it sounds like you guys are breaking through anyway and getting the work done. We are, yeah. and we have, there's growing interest too yeah. in the larger you know, funding agencies to target metabolism, and there's interest in the ketogenic diet now too. Um, just by conversations with people who um, mm. uh, speak to those at the NIH and NCI, I've heard from m multiple routes that there's really a lot of interest. And just even five years ago, it was really not it's of fringe. interest. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it is 
find, you know, it's getting the attention that it deserves based on the preclinical yeah. evidence. So it's really yeah. exciting. <laughs> it is indeed. And I believe multiple pharmaceutical companies are getting very interested in the ketogenic pathways. Yeah. Which I can only is as imagine. good a validation as any <laughs> that they're <true>. important. <laughs> they are very clearly important. Excellent. Yes. So uh, just one last thing then. So if someone yeah. had cancer, well, I know what yeah. I would do knowing what I do. Not yeah. a huge amount, but a limited amount I do know about this yeah. science. Uh, if you had cancer and you were not in a very late stage and maybe in a delicate state, it would seem like it's almost a default no-brainer <laughs> to do a very low carb or ketogenic while also pursuing all the other orthodox paths. So I think mm. the, the preclinical studies that are, out, that are out there right now support that it's going to have a nice place. And I think what really interestingly, they're suggesting that the diet sensitizes cancers to standard of care. Mm. So we're, um, studies have shown a nice synergy between the ketogenic diet and radiation and also chemotherapy, which um, is fantastic for Super. trying to get it into the clinic. Um, you know, I'm really excited about what the clinical trials are going to show us. Um, we don't know the answer quite yet, but we will soon, I think. We will. <laughs> and for now, the preponderance of the evidence <laughs> there heavily, <you> go. <laughs> heavily is in favor of ketogenic <laughs> diets, though not proven in human trials. That's very true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Best of luck with your research. Thank you so Thanks much. a lot. I appreciate Angela. it. Cheers.